All right, so today is our starting of the next phase of the course. Um, that doesn't seem like a thermodynamics book, so you can close it and open notes for thermodynamics and propulsion. And um, so, we are going towards engines, uh, into engines. The first one is internal combustion engine, the engine that we see, um, well, we do not see, it is under the hood of our cars. And of course, for the, all those who are fascinated by motorbikes, there you can see the engine um, right underneath where your legs are. Um, and uh, we will see the working of uh, this engine, we have one or two videos, we have uploaded these on Moodle and um, for those who happen to remember Moodle and, uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, we will look at uh, some videos to get a feel of what is happening inside. I am sure this, to, the, the, however realistic these videos look, they are still very simplified version of what really happens inside those engines under the hood and there are so many tubes and pipes and this and that inside that they are probably all taken out and we are, they are simplified the version to uh, kind of look closest to what we can understand in the framework of um, our 50 minutes class. Um, okay. And, uh, and, and at the outset, let me say that as we look at more applied things, we will come across questions which are also more applied, not so much about entropy and uh, enthalpy anymore and we will say, hey, why is that this thing happens like that? Why is there a pipe going in? Why is there a valve there uh, at that place? And uh, there will be questions for which we may not have the answer uh, in the class and that is where it gets a little more interesting where I would want you guys to find some answers yourself. So, it will, if time permits, we will try a small exercise today. We will have our phones out and connect to uh, with the Wi-Fi. Uh, I am sure all of you have it, we would love to do that. But, but we will also try to, yeah, you can now play on the phone like every day. <laughs> today is legitimate and to, maybe onward, today onwards it will be legitimate to play on the phone. As long as you can get some answers to the kind of questions that come up in class. Um, saying this vehicle has this kind of engine, what is so special about it? No, we will we'll have some examples also. But okay, so, um, but by the way, internal combustion engine, anybody has thought about why it is called internal combustion engine, IC engine? <laughs> Everybody seems to know, okay, fine, yes. Well, that is true for all engines now. That is right. So, if you think about the older days, the combustion was outside. It was a pot of water and there is combustion underneath. Many times it was under the ground um, uh, and, and uh, of course, you have to have air supply. But um, uh, there was a furnace inside which is boiling the water. So, the uh, combustion was outside the engine and the engine was, what is the engine? The piston and the cylinder. So, now, as you said rightly, that the combustion was happening inside the engine and that, was, that seems to be the fastest way of adding heat to the engine, to the working gas that is actually going to, really going to do the work, yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, all other ways of boiling water, creating steam, piping it in and out, all are really too slow for the way that we want to run our vehicles, we want to go fast and faster. So, at some point even this, this engine turns out to be too slow for all of us aerospace, to be aerospace engineers who want to go faster and faster. Okay. All right. So, let us start with the video and uh, there is an audio with it, which is not much to um, hear, but let us see if I can, something happened to the audio. No, there is an audio. It is not much of a voice, it is more of a disco music. So, I am in slow motion.
that is it ok. So, we see I am sure we have all of us have seen uh, what is going on inside and uh, around it and let us kind of split up into the key components and then we will see how it how we will go back to the video and see it in more detail. So, what do we see in terms of geometry of the of, of uh, an IC engine? The main components piston cylinder very uh, in fact, the cylinders are actually transparent if you have not figured it out already. The cylinders are not shown they are showing what is happening in the cylinder piston is moving. So, imagine the cylinders are made out of glass or something which well we will come back to the figure. So, the geometry is a piston and a cylinder and let me draw it horizontal. Um, the piston is attached to what this these two do two shafts they are called crank shafts or uh, the one that the attachment to it is called crank shaft and that is what rotates or is connected to our wheels in some way through gear boxes and so on and so forth. So, the motion of the piston is converted to the rotation of the crankshaft. Either way piston can go left or right depending on compression expansion. So, the crankshaft rotates clockwise or anti clockwise yeah agreed that is not true. So, the engine the wheels will go clockwise and then go anti clockwise that would not work very well. The crankshaft goes only in one direction. Right? Okay, for those who have figured out that is great otherwise we will take a look at more closely. Um, what does is there in this whole thing? If you look at the key components, what it, what does you see? There are valves. Most very important. So there are openings in this simplified picture. There are openings which are. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger to make the picture very clear. These are pipes, and inside the pipes there are valves which open and close in a synchronized way to do the job the way it should be done. In fact, I think the picture shows a blue tube, a blue pipe and a red pipe right. Blue is cold, red is hot. So, bl the blue is the cold air and fuel. In fact, there is also a green pipe. Did anybody notice that? That is the uh, fuel being injected into this. So, air and fuel come in and get inside to the to the inlet valve and the other one is exhaust to get rid of the combustion products. Uh, what else did you see? Ignition. Spark plug ignition that is the key thing without that things would not quite work. So, somewhere here is the ignition spark plug and if you have driven a car or in a family you have had a car they will say the spark plug is gone or something has to be replaced that is the most common thing that goes off in an engine. Um, okay. So, this engine is called a four stroke engine. Four stroke engine. There are four key strokes in this whole arrangement. Um, ah, not injection, intake intake where the piston moves and air is taken inside the cylinder, compression, expansion and exhaust. Let us draw typical diagrams how it works and then we will see it happening inside the in the video. So, I am going to draw, draw four identical pictures of the same piston cylinder which is our engine. I 
and now kind of turn it turn it vertical I have my piston here which is connected through that crankshaft to this rotating arrangement. So, intake is when one of the valves is open and the other one is closed. So, the exhaust valve is closed, the intake valve is open, air can flow in through air and mixture of uh, mixed with fuel can enter through the intake port. The piston is moving down during the stroke, rotating let us think of it as a disc or the, the crank shaft, the shaft that actually connects to the to the uh, to the weeds and the uh, power uh, drive is rotating like a half circle, it can start over here end at the bottom. A half circle rotation of this will have a um, displacement of the piston from the topmost to the lowermost position and it has filled up with air. Uh, that is our intake stroke. Compression is opposite, compression is when the piston goes back and compresses the gas inside. So, if the piston is already down at the end of the uh, intake stroke, it is going up and now both the walls are closed, no fluid can um, exit it's it's um, it's a closed cylinder with, with the valves uh, in place the piston goes up and the crank shaft if i can try to draw a similar picture is turning the other half cycle other half circle to go to the top position At the end of the compression stroke, when the gas is more or less highly compressed, high pressure, high temperature, the spark plug fires, it ignites. The air and fuel are already mixed inside, it ignites the mixture and the combustion happens fairly rapidly. At the end of that, comp uh, and, 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 and it, the combustion will raise the pressure and temperature even higher and that will lead to the next step which is the expansion stroke where that high pressure high temperature gas inside will do the work, it will push the piston down. So, um, here is our connection, piston moving down, the crankshaft doing the next the third half circle and during this again both the walls are closed, no air or the combustion products can leak outside, you just drive the piston down up to the lowest position let us assume here and then is the exhaust stroke which in which the exhaust port, the exhaust uh, um, vent opens up and the air starts, air and combustion product starts going out through that. The intake valve is closed, correct. The spark thing comes somewhere at the end of combustion compressor and the beginning of expansion. So, that the four strokes are identified with the motion of the piston and the spark plug and the combustion happens so much more rapidly that there is no separate, there is no motion, much motion of the uh, piston during that combustion process. So, the spark plug is not happening when this is slowly moving up, not at that point, it is at the end of it. So, if you wish in fact, this is, this comes only at the end of this, you are right, somewhere in between this and this, but not full strokes, only part of that, very small fraction of that. Uh, of the compression, last part of the compression stroke and probably very little part of the expansion stroke.
initial part of the expansion stroke. The expansion stroke is also called the power stroke that is where you are generating the power as expected you know. So, let me write that down. and complete the picture here. So, with these four strokes you come to a point where the piston is back at the topmost position, all the gas has been eliminated and you are ready to start the next stroke, next cycle. So, that is why four stroke um, engine is this is all these four steps together make one cycle of the engine. So, let us see how this is working out in our um, thing a bit in slow motion now when we get to that I will pause it and take a look. Yeah, I think they will isolate one engine now. Okay, let us do it one more time. It is possible that this is the starting of the stroke. What they are showing is two valves here, and the blue um, pipe is the cold air, and the green one is putting fuel into it. Let us see if I have got it right not very clear ok maybe now yeah. Is it here that is the beginning maybe yeah let us try that now see ok cold air comes in blue with some fuel mixed into it intake stroke is over compression stroke is done and then combustion right or and the expansion power stroke. Ah, so, that is you are right, right at that initial part of the com power stroke is you are getting combustion and then the exhaust all the red or red gases are, are pushed out and we are back to the place where we can start the next cycle 1. So, they are showing only a slight motion of these walls um, to, to may open or close uh, the, the the entry and exit 2, 3 and now you can just see a slight motion of this one coming down yeah 4. Ah, so, this one is showing the fuel injection through this green tube. So, now the question is well let us go a little bit further back oh sorry one second yeah 4 cylinders 4 pistons and double the that many or 4 times that many valves um, 2 of them up 2 of them down 2 of the pistons are up 2 of them are down. So, they are out of sync right. Um, would it make sense to keep all of them in one sink so you can get maximum power in one shot? No, no. Why? Power goes keep and power would keep going up and down. So the only one fourth of the thing you'll get a very peak power, and then rest of them are zero power. Okay, that's right. Anything else? Exhaust. Too much exhaust in one shot. Continuous exhaust. How would you start the engine? Good question. That's, um, that's one issue. But let's say it is started. Or a vibration. Anyone else? So, one last reason I could think of, yes? Instability, we are getting very advanced, very good, possibly two, I do not know, <laughs> that would say, but yes. So, yes, exactly. So, what is go doing this guy? What is pushing this up? The crankshaft, and what is moving the crankshaft? So, fly by, by, by flywheel, what do you mean by that? So, are we saying that because a power stroke has moved that 
thing, a heavy thing, it is its inertia is taking it back? Possibly true. But what about the other engine having a power stroke at the same time this guy wants a compression? That wouldn't be too bad, would it? You want it to, want to compress. So, if this guy is do, doing compression, another one is doing expansion, power stroke. And they are probably attached not at the same point, if the phase diff, you know, one, one is attached to the top of it. So, this will move it down, the, uh, the same wheel is attached here and this guy will be moved up. Possibly true, right? Let us see if you can see that happening here. The resolution is a little poor on a bigger screen. You can see better on your handheld device, I think. So, if you can see clearly, there are certain arrangements on these shafts, certain cam, cam shaft they call it, right, which keep moving things uh, uh, in and out. So, they are all in, in, a, in, a, in a fashion in such that uh, we, are, we are gone past the four cylinders, but can we see something happening? It's hard to see, unfortunately. It's really hard to see in this. But if you see it on your, maybe you can make out better. But I think the idea is that when one is going down, the other one is coming up, and there are four strokes. So there are four of them. Each once any one of the cylinders is doing one of the strokes. I think that is what is happening inside. Although the picture is not very clear, the video is not very clear. Okay, so. Um, but there are engines with more or less number of cylinders, aren't there? Yeah, there are V6 on, on bigger vehicles, bigger cars. V8? V8? What kind of vehicles have V8? Trucks and stuff? Or? Some cars. Race cars, maybe. Yeah. So that takes us to something like this, which is a PDF compiled um, by students and TAs in a previous uh, last year, the previous year where it shows all kind of vehicles. It says, th this is a car we see, you see on the road um, these days, a Honda car and it says that it has an engine which looks like this, again hard to see it far away, it is a diesel engine and the specifications are given, at least some of the key specifications are given, 4 cylinders, displacement of 1498 cc number of valves, 16. So, that is probably the same picture that we are seeing, 4 cylinders, each cylinder has 4 valves, 2 in inlet valves and 2 exhaust valves. Power and torque is the performance of the engine. Um, if I come back, if I have a page up here now, um, there are some other vehicles, smaller vehicles I think, but then there are all these fancy motorbikes which I am sure will fascinate us much more. It has a two cylinder, two stroke engine, not a four stroke and some details of uh, power and fuel capacity and so on and so forth. Let us come back a little bit further. Ah, this is our classic. My dad had one of these until recently and I was using it. So, that is the engine, this is a real picture of the engine on the scooter and single cylinder, two stroke. Wow, you can imagine how a single cylinder engine would work. I am sure that it will, the, the working would be slightly different from what we see here. In fact, in a single cylinder, they have multiple compartments and certain different arrangements. Um, if you wish, you can actually look into these and if you have time, we can see if you can find something useful um, to, ah, here is our another interesting vehicle with an engine which has a four stroke liquid cooled. What is DOHC? Well, okay, two camshafts. Okay, what is DOHC? How does that mean, camshaft? Dual overhead. Dual overhead camshaft. So, is it something like the video? They had two camshafts. So, okay, so what it means is that what he just said is he's talking about these. So, if you look at the smaller version of this video, the smaller screen size, you will see that there are what are called cams. Anybody know what cam is? linear motion, right? So, this, this is opposite, it converts linear to rotational motion. Something on a shaft, if you have a uh, disc which is not circular, right? Does this come into any of your engineering design, engineering drawing or anything like that? Workshop, nothing, right? Okay. One thing, it is a kind of a specialized topic. So, so essentially, 
the rotation of the shaft is converted into a linear motion of the the valves the valves are to move just linear up and down and the and the and the rotation is and and the shape of that thing is such that it will make the thing only give a slight motion up and down at the right point um dual what did you say dual overhead camshaft Cam okay parallel twin is there a the mystic twin shaft maybe displacement bore and stroke from one of our tutorials i think compression ratio so we'll come to compression ratio very soon that is one parameter which decides the performance of an engine of an ic engine of course that will require some of our thermodynamic derivations which we'll come to do a bit in a bit cooling liquid all kind of things fuel injection dfi at dual 32 mm throttle bodies what is dfi it's my time to ask you yeah right go ahead use your phone find it you can put your phone up wireless. now it's legitimate to use the phone on the desk no wireless say it loud uh, one more time okay 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 so that is what we have kind of seen in the video with four so two 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 cylinders side by side so there can be multiple arrangements of a uh, of a cylinder there's a, there's a v cylinder have you heard of a v cylinder some of the vehicles have v shaped uh, arrangement of cylinders i'm sure there's some advantage for that um so yeah and then it says digit ignition is tcbi louder all right, transistor controlled brake breaker less ignition. Okay, we know what transistor is. <laughs> What's the last part? Breaker less. Breaker less is something which is not there. <laughs> the breaker is not there, which if you can figure out what is breaker of an engine. So um, yeah, I think I'm sure you can uh, continue this process a bit more, and I, I tend to, I want to wish to encourage this in the class in the, the second half of the course. As we go more from, or well, slightly away from formulas and more into um, things that are happening around us, um, and I'm sure you can find your favorite motorbike or favorite uh, thing to see what kind of engine. And um, do you see these around? Yes. Or is it the old version? Do you see these around? In, uh, the, you do. Okay. Okay. You can make out from very far. The so sound is such. They are apparently patented to the sound. You can't generate that sound like that. Okay, here is the engine. Single cylinder, four stroke, twin spark, twin spark. Okay, two sparks or two spark plugs. What does it mean? No phones there? There are, okay. Bore and stroke, displacement, maximum power, compression ratio. <laughs> Okay, so um, fine. So there, are, I think there, there are probably more, and there are more, um, uh, some more examples in the another PDF. We'll have these available on on Moodle. Um, uh, if we can find a way to share um, what we are, if there's something interesting we are finding, that would be good. To share with other people, um, and you guys are better at uh, sharing stuff than me, I suppose, and you can figure out a way to do that. Um, we are stuck at the old-fashioned way of Moodle that you post on Moodle, and at some point somebody feels like coming by and having a look. But I'm sure there are faster ways of doing it. Um, but that will come come back to that later. Let me go a little bit towards um, how do we understand and how do we analyze and how do we figure out how good the engine is and how to make it better. Finally, the best way, most important question. So with that idea, um, let me show the PV diagram. of this piston cylinder arrangement, PV diagram of the gas inside. If you have to think about it in terms of thermodynamics, that's our system doing the work. It looks like something of this sort. And I'm sure there'll be many variations of this. This is a fairly realistic picture of you start from this point um, 
the piston goes down and the volume increases and your valve is open so you are actually taking air probably at atmospheric close to ambient condition and there is not really much of a pressure change so at constant pressure you are taking fluid or air in intake. This guy is compression stroke. Pressure, volume is decreasing, the valves are closed, pressure has to increase and temperature has to increase. At some point towards the end of the compression stroke, you have ignition. Also, although the, uh, the, the video shows more at a, as a part of expansion, but somewhere at that, you know, you are kind of finishing up your compression, you have almost there, you ignite and it burns while the piston is kind of slowly coming to rest and then returns starting its next stroke. So, um, and the next stroke while it is coming down is expansion of the power stroke and finally, this is exhaust. And you come back to a point where you are at very low volume and low pressure. There is nothing in the cylinder essentially. Time to wake him up. Sir, yes. So, are we analyzing the volume of the cylinder or the volume of the gas? We are analyzing the system which is our gas inside. We have not, we have not yet started analyzing it. Let me answer first, first say that. We are yet to analyze, apply thermodynamic analysis to it in the technical term. We are saying, okay, you are right, that is a very good point. Let us say we, we, this is the volume of the cylinder, that probably makes sense. Volume inside the cylinder, which is, um, yeah, it is the volume inside the cylinder. To um, get to the next stage where we can actually apply um, any of our principles we have learned in terms of heat and work interaction and then we only we can come to something called efficiency and then we can say how good or bad our engine is or how to make it better. Um, we have to come to a uh, situation which we understand better in terms of what we have done until now. So, there is a simplification involved. So, this is the real cycle and you make a set of series of assumptions and of course, we will talk about what is the validity or what is the logic behind each assumption which takes us to a PV diagram which we are familiar with which we have somewhat like that we have seen and we can start applying our um, adiabatic, isentropic, all kind of stuff that we have learned. Uh, to do that, the first assumption we is, we say that the working fluid is very close to air. We have air plus a small fraction of fuel mixed into it, but we say let us say assume that we are working with air. Let us for a time being, okay, we can always change the property of the gas once we have understood the process. So, first thing is air and I will say let us assume it to be a perfect gas. If there was no combustion, we would fairly be, we would be very fairly be close to a perfect gas assumption. Pressure, temperature, density, volume varying as per the ideal gas law, but we have combustion. So, suddenly somewhere in between the composition changes, you have chemical reactions. So, um, we will say for time being, let us assume that it is just a heat addition to a gas which is not changing in properties. Otherwise, we cannot analyze, we cannot go further until we understand all of combustion and chemical reactions. So, to at this point to move ahead, we say combustion is, a, is only a heat addition because that is something we have seen before and we can um, uh, work it out without changing the properties, um, without 
change of change in properties of the gas of the working fluid and the third thing or there are many more there are three problems the third important thing is that there is no exhaust and there is no intake uh, before that let me say one more thing once we have assumed it to be con air as a perfect gas let's come to number 3 in a second it will make it more sense that time let's let's say air at con uh, air, air as perfect gas is being taken in at constant pressure it should be a horizontal line so the intake stroke i'm saying it's almost like a constant pressure intake of air then there is work done and the work done is by compression the compression work done we're saying is only a work interaction step let's assume that there is no heat transfer we're not losing any heat of course we're not adding any heat in compression for time being uh, until the point we start ignition that up till that point we are doing work but we're not losing any heat even if you're losing very it's a small amount of heat you can neglect it so it's a only a work interaction and let's assume it's reversible it's no losses the friction the pistons are frictionless and the fluid doesn't have any more friction on the walls and all that stuff so if it is reversible and adiabatic we know what it is we have heard that before it looks like this and you can see the similarity between that step and the real step if you believe that the diagram is somewhat close to real compression is reversible adiabatic and when combustion starts this heat addition is more or less like a vertical line and we said that the piston is coming up and it has to stop it has to slow down stop and start the reverse the next stroke and during that process the volume is minimum and let's say the combustion is fast enough that all of that happens in that time during that time volume is not changing by very much it's close to a constant volume it's an approximation but combustor is heat addition at constant volume there are many other engines where this is not true but in this case it happens that it's still fairly reasonable so here is my next step which is heat addition in fact if i get the chance i may even write this down let's call these a point a point b c d after combustion or heat addition we have the expansion step which is exactly opposite to compression we are saying that it's it's the work extraction process where we again there is heat transfer or heat exchange is very minimal almost zero and we have a, again a uh, adiabatic zero heat transfer zero heat exchange and no losses idealized system another reversible adiabatic i am short of space here you can make a better picture and move the lines away and at this point at the end of the work uh, at the end of expansion stroke you open the exhaust valve so there is a blow down step as soon as you open the valve pressure so suddenly fall pressure equalizes almost immediately as soon as you open a valve it'll it's a atmospheric pressure outside even before the thing is uh, is is pushed out pressure will suddenly change even before the the piston has moved back start moving back volume has not changed but pressure will quickly equalize to outside so if it is a um, pressure drops at constant without much change of volume this is the step which is the last bit here a b c d e and it brings it back to a, a state f which is same as b pressure equal to atmospheric which was at the end of intake stroke before the when while the valve was open to outside atmosphere this is the beginning of 
exhaust stroke where you are again at the same pressure and you are starting to push the combustion products out. So let me write that now, um, A to B intake, B to C compression, C to D combustion, D to E expansion or power, um, E to F is the blow down step and F to A is exhaust. Somewhat makes sense? And if it is so, then if I now say that for our thermodynamic analysis, let us put the number 4 assumption here, no intake, no exhaust. For the purpose of thermodynamic analysis, we only need to look at this cycle, the lower part has no net work or no net heat changes, they are identical process, whatever happens will cancel out. How did we lose heat in the process of E to F? Um, what we are saying is that as soon as you open the valve, let me come to that in a second, I think we are one step, you have got a good question, it is one step further. Let us say we understand this much, okay. If we, um, with these assumptions, what we have gone is from the real cycle to what is called the air standard cycle. equivalent air standard cycle they call it, air because we have replaced the working fluid with whatever was inside fuel, air, combustion product by air only and we are assuming a standard process instead of a real thing, we are saying all these assumptions of no losses and each of these steps are exactly adiabatic and reversible and combustion is constant volume, these are standardized way of looking at a real cycle with these assumptions. It turns out, well I guess the guy who first did it must have been this auto and this cycle is called an auto cycle. So auto cycle is the air standard version of our combustion or IC engine, petrol based IC engine. Obviously, the alternate other option is diesel and there was a guy called diesel who came up with this cycle, so we are stuck with it now. Okay, let us uh, draw the other picture which is soon you will realize is more useful than PV, we are running out of time, let me pick up a few pieces quickly and um, so, we are not interested in A to B anymore, in fact, what I should do is, let before I do T S, let me do P V in a, a bit cleaned up version and then I have still have space for a T S diagram. So, here are my P V and T S diagram, now we are talking about P and V of the system of the gas inside. So, we are not doing any exhaust and intake anymore, so we are stuck with the same amount of gas, property, its properties are changing but composition is not. We have to exhaust the gas only because we cannot burn any more fuel, we have already burnt it. So, but if you do not have uh, that complication, we are, we have these two um, isentropic, well reversible adiabatic work interactions and constant, so let me put it this way, 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and back to 1, 
and 1 to 2 is compression. So, we say let us say this is a work interaction W C go, going into the cycle and 3 to 4 is our expansion step, 2 to 3 is heat addition Q, 4 to 1 is heat rejection Q prime. And the equivalent T s diagram is 1 to 2 is reversible adiabatic, so it is an isentropic process. Constant volume heat addition is something of this kind to step 3, step uh, to 4 is expansion. So, here is 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and back to 1. Um, w c w e heat added q heat rejected q prime. So, let us write it down um, 1 to 2 uh, reversible adiabatic work 2 to 3 constant vo volume heat addition 3 to 4 reversible adiabatic expansion is called the first one as compression and 4 to 1 is another constant volume heat rejection. Kind of clear? And I guess now the question is more relevant that what how is what is 4 to 1? What is happening in 4 to 1? Right? What kind of heat rejection is happening? We are saying at at 4 we are at we are at, we are at the bottom of the expansion stroke. Okay. So our, yeah, so we are at this point where the volume is highest, we have extracted the power from the hot combustion products, the hot gas, we are at high volume. Um, and at that point we open the exhaust valve, pressure equalizes, even without there is much change in the volume, there will be some gas leaking out quickly, but I think much more or less it is here, immediately the pressure equalize, pressure drop, volume constant which means temperature has to drop. So, you are losing a lot of the heat suddenly, of course it has to be through the walls of the cylinder because gas is still yet to go out, temperature has dropped. We end up with a from 4 to 1 we have lost heat and pressure and then if you think about the exhaust step is where you are ejecting out that. Uh, but in our standard cycle where we do not worry, worry about ejecting um, the gas itself, you basically take that point and start your process again, do compression again and again, add heat and expansion and back to uh, heat rejection. Questions? Yeah, I think that is the only way we can think of now. The heat has to go through the cylinder, the gas is still there inside, heat has to go out, temperature has to drop immediately. If it is an ideal gas, it has to be, so it is an idealization to some extent. It is an idealization of, I think in reality heat law is happening because of this sudden drop in pressure and that you see hot combustion products are exited out, obviously right, we know that there is a hot thing coming out of there. But it is idealized in a way that more, much of it is happening over E to F and less over this. So, there is a kind of a step here, an idealization of this curved line into two steps, one being constant volume and the other being constant pressure. And if you have understood up till this, then the rest is fairly straightforward. We will take it up next time, quickly apply 
heat addition, constant volume, CV, temperature difference, all kind of things we know and come up with some relations which will help us quantify that in this process, what is the work, what is the heat, what is the efficiency and what is the critical parameter which controls the efficiency. It turns out there is one critical parameter and that is what we are most interested in. Can we now tweak this, that parameter to get better and what are the limits, how far can we tweak it to? So, that will be the limit of these engines and then we say this is not good enough beyond the point. So, we go to the next one diesel engine ok, fine we will stop here.